what is up lads and gals it is Samuel here back with another should you pull video and today i'm going to be talking about the limited hero banner which is going to be running for two weeks guys it is going to be luna and draco plate it starts on september 23rd and alongside her the regular hero banner tenebria with her artifact crimson moon of nightmares which is also starting on september 23rd but her banner will only run for a week now, because Luna is limited, she will run for two weeks, guys, so you do have a longer period of time to stock up your bookmarks. And keep in mind that limiteds only run usually around once a year, so you really want to make sure you can try to pull for them, especially if you have some interest in that unit because they won't be back for another year. Now, without further ado, let me just go over the units and what they're good at and if they're worth pulling for, and I'm going to start with Tenebria. Now, Tenebria is a Fire Mage, guys. Um, she's pretty good in Earth Expedition and some Raid. And you can also use her in some golem hunt as well, but people really don't farm golem. In PvP, she's good as a controller, so you can use her in like RTA or like arena offense teams and even Guild Wars offense teams. Um, she's fallen off a lot in the meta though. She used to be pretty decent about like a year ago, I'd say. But as of now, control is pretty hard to play in general, and she's kind of just power crept. So we're kind of waiting for buff stunner, right, for PvP. Uh, but let me go over skills real quick. So her S3 is going to be an AoE attack that has a decreased defense and a sleep on it and also increase your attack. Now, it's weird because the attack buff is applied after the damage happens, so kind of sucks. I really do expect, though, when they buff it, that the attack buff is going to apply before you do the damage, um, especially if they want to make it more viable, because a lot of units that have the built-in attack buff, like Ram and the recently um, buffed Mercedes, gets the attack buff like before the damage applies, so I do expect them to change this soon. But yeah, for now, it is just after the attack lands, you get the attack buff, which kind of sucks. And this is the Soulburn, right? So you can increase the damage of this. Um, it actually is a pretty decent modifier in the Soulburn damage. I mean, it only costs 10 souls as well, so pretty good for damage dealing and very, very nice to have an AoE defense break, especially for PvE content. And then our S2 is going to be a AoE attack that just pushes back CR and decreases speed. So you can kind of see where the um, control aspect of this unit comes into play. She decreases defense and sleeps, and then you kind of just ignore the slept targets, and then you can have Tenebria lap and then, you know, push back CR and decrease speed or, you know, one-shot someone. Um, with another DPS, that's defense broken. There's a lot of options, but yeah, a lot of debuffs and a lot of um, just really annoying to play against in general. And our S1 is also going to be another sleep. Um, and the thing is, when you put an enemy to sleep, you actually see our push yourself. So the chance is pretty high on this. It's 70%. So actually, you will be cycling pretty fast because you'll be landing a lot of sleeps. The only problem is if you face like high ER, ER targets or cleansers, right? And it's kind of annoying to deal with because uh, your debuffs are just getting cleansed. So that's kind of why I'm saying like she's pretty hard to use in PvP right now in um uh in the current season because she has fallen off a bit because control's a bit weak. Now her imprint, uh, not that great in my opinion. So dual attack chance, cool, right? Um, pretty unique. You don't really see a lot of units with this for self imprint. Um, also crit chance, right, is a uh, okay as well for the team. But the thing is, you're not gonna build units with less than 100% crit chance, especially on DPS. Um, if you are trying to, you know use those units without Tenebria, but this is okay in like control comps because control comps don't, or units don't really run 100% crit, so having the extra crit will actually be kind of nice. Um, yeah, and the dual attack's like okay, so you don't really focus your imprints on her guys. Uh, most of the Tenebria copies you pull will be saved for, you know, Fairy Tale Tenebria, Spectre Tenebria, um, those imprints are a lot better. Um, but yeah, as in her current state, I don't think she's that great of a unit, I don't think she's worth pulling for her. She is pretty waifu because she's like the the poster girl of the game kind of um, alongside with the other banner Luna um, but yeah she's not that good in my opinion um, but I do like her design so I did pull her, her last time uh, her banner ran um, and if you like her design you can pull for her but I really really um, you know recommend against it because there are so many good banners coming up and I'll go over that in, a, in the next banner because the next banner is pretty good as well Luna um, but yeah Tenebria easy skip guys um, she's easily replaceable everywhere in PvE. The only place she's very strong in is Earth Expedition, but even then you can replace her with um, like Balan Cezan and run Balan Cezan with like another free-to-play unit like Bomb Model Kana, and they do the job just as well, if not a little bit better. Um, and in PvP, she's not really usable. Some people like running her on like counter set um, just to have like that sleep chance, but uh, I'm not too much of a fan. I don't think she's worth pulling for, especially in the current time frame where there's so many good banners coming out. So easy skip for me. And next we have Luna, the Ice Warrior, the limited unit that is on the next week's banner, or this week's banner if you're watching this in the next week. Um, she, uh, yeah, her design's pretty nice, as you can tell. Um, she's pretty decent in PvE as a uh, single target DPS. She works similarly to Seal Arena. You can take her into like Rage. She can use 
be used in Wyvern, actually, if you have enough debuffs. Um, you can use her in Biss a lot, you can use her in um, Fire Expedition. She's the best DPS for Fire Expedition by far. Um, yeah, just a lot of applications for PvE, especially since they buffed her, because now if you manual use her, so in like Abyss and like Raid even, um, and you Soul Burn her S1, it's just a, it just does a lot of damage, so very, very strong. Uh, for PvP, they did try to buff her with her exclusive equipment and kind of like with her S3 and stuff like that, penetrating defense. It's just that it's kind of hard to use her, honestly. Um, you would have to run her on like a counter set, I guess, and pray that, you know, she gets some counters off to push her CR with her S1 because her exclusive equipment actually does push her CR when she S1s. Um, but I don't really see her too much in RT at all. I think some people play with her to have fun with her because um, she her, they like her design. Um, I actually might try to test her out as well because I do have my Luna sitting six star just in fire expedition but maybe i can one day gear her for pvp because she is pretty fun to use her animations are nice and her model is nice but yeah i think in pvp she's not that great she's more of a pve unit at the moment which is kind of sad because she's a lot of people's favorite unit but let's get into her skills guys so her s3 is going to be a single target nuke if you fa um, fully mola this it's actually 100 percent chance to defense break and also will penetrate defense, right? And this will always attack using Adventation's element, meaning you get 15% crit chance added onto this. And also you get, you know, no hit, you know, decreased chance against earth units. Um, so pretty nice to use. Now, when you kill someone, you get extra souls, but that one's like, okay. And there's also an exclusive equipment where after you S3 and kill someone, you get another turn. Um, yeah, pretty cool skill. It does a lot of damage, huge single target nuke. Her S2 got changed in a recent buff. So now it gives her crit chance and crit hit resistance. Um, and you'll get attack or defense depending on if you are 50% HP or higher or 50% or lower than 50%. Yeah. So this makes gearing her a lot easier because obviously you get 30% crit for free. And it kind of makes her a little bit more tankier, right? As a bruiser, she kind of struggled in the past where she was dying super quick. Uh, but now crit hit resistance is pretty nice to have. Pretty good buff. Uh, but you can get unlucky and you just get crit anyway. So there are situations where she'll actually feel a bit um, squishier. Now her S1 is her single target attack. Uh, basically what she does is she attacks and it has like a random roll from 1 to 3 and the higher the roll the more damage it does and the higher the roll the cooldown or S3 goes down quicker because you'll see the S3 cooldown is 10 turns but in reality it'll probably be like 4 you know turns ish so it's not as long as it looks you just gotta pray you um roll high or you soul burn S1 to make sure you roll the 3 um so yeah Luna I think ah oh, man Luna's hard right because she she is pretty waifu top tier waifu and she's pretty decent in PvE now um, pretty strong actually in my opinion. I think she is better than Sealer Rena if you do decide to um, invest in her. But she's not really using PvP. And the thing is, the next limited banner right after Luna, guys, is going to be Landy. And Landy is a monster in PvE. She is god tier in PvE and god tier in PvP. Um, the only place where Luna is used over Landy in PvE is literally Fire Expedition. So, I mean, if you're really struggling with Fire Expedition, you can, you, you can try to pull for Luna. But I would really recommend making sure you have enough to pull Landy. And if you are watching this video at the time of Tamarin's banner as well, you have Tamarin as well. And then Luna is the third priority. Now, if you're not too sure what I'm trying to say here, I do have another video up that this, that goes over um, Landy versus Tamarin versus Luna. Check that out if you guys need more info on that. But yeah, pull for Luna only if you have enough for Landy saved up in terms of bookmarks. And you already have Tamarin if Tamarin's banner um, is running currently. If Tamarin's banner already passed... Just make sure you already have enough bookmarks for Landy and then try to pull for Luna because Landy is a must pull and Luna, although she is nice and the models looks amazing and, you know, two big reasons, yada, yada, yada. Uh, Landy, you just cannot miss Landy, you guys. She's just too broken. So um, I would say if you have enough for Landy, easy pull. Luna is pretty fun to use and, you know, top tier waifu. But um, in, a, in terms of just gameplay, though, she is kind of skippable because she is replaceable in... Um, in terms of PvE, so um, really up to you guys. Um, I recommend skipping her if you only have enough for one pity at the moment to make sure you have enough for Landy because Landy is just that important to get, guys. Um, and yeah, let's get into the artifacts. And first, I'm going to start with Tenebris Artifact because this one's really simple. Um, very, very easy skip, guys. It's an exclusive mage artifact that just increases dual attack chance and when it's not your turn, increases effectiveness. So you would use this on, like, Tenebria, right? Because, um... She has that dual attack imprint, you just increase her dual attack chance, and you try to spam the dual attacks to sleep someone. But the thing is, dual attacks are not always good, guys. Like, think about it, you're going into G Purges, right, and he dodges. Okay, well then, dual attack, you know, will push CR of the team. G Purges is a very, very common pick. Same thing if you're against, like, Angel of Light Angelica. If you attack one of her teammates, and then the dual attack procs, 
then some, her like she might cut in front of your team and then use a skill like her S3 or something just, or silence someone would be very very annoying. I'm saying with like Ram, if you dual attack into a Ram and she gets a higher chance for you know uh, the counter attack and there's like, just a lot of possibilities. Now in general, dual attacks are good, but um, there's some situations where it's not that great. And also on Tenebra, you're gonna want to run like Abyssal Crown anyways. Very very powerful on Tenebra because she has two AOE attacks. And if she misses the sweep, she can has a chance to stun with her S1 as well, as well as on her other abilities. So I think this is an easy skip, guys. This needs to be kind of reworked. Um, don't even, you know, bother buying this from the Powder Knowledge Shop. Um, now let's get into Draco Plate. Now, Draco Plate is an exclusive warrior artifact. It is Luna's artifact. It is limited, so it is going to come out once a year on average. Basically what it does, it is going to give you crit hit damage and will also make you take less damage from crits. Um, so, long story short, this is the best warrior artifact in the game alongside Sigurds. The only time Sigurds is better than Draco is when that unit needs a lot of sustain, such as like Rem, um, Ravi, right? They need a lot of sustain for their kits to work because they play pretty slow. But on units that, you know, are generally a lot more bulky and actually want to do a lot of damage very fast, like Alencia, because she has a lot of AoE, and, you know, she relies on her S1, S2 common to one-shot people, then Draco Plate is very, very good. On Luna, Draco Plate is very, very strong. This is an artifact that's limited that people actually wail on the banners for to try to get max copies because Draco Play is just that strong for warriors. So if you have the powder to spare, I would definitely buy this, even if it makes it so that you can't buy Landy's artifact next week, um, which is also a limited artifact, by the way. Um, it doesn't matter because Draco Play is a lot better than Landy's artifact. Landy's artifact isn't used as much, so make sure you buy Draco Play. Um, if you pull it, I would still buy it, right? Because eventually you're going to want to buy um, enough copies or pull enough copies to max limit break it because this, this artifact is crazy. 30% free crit damage and 16% just like flat damage overall from DPSs because DPSs will pretty much always be critting you. It's just insane, guys, and it's very, very strong for warrior class users because warrior classes usually get the most damage increase from crit damage and also need to be tanky. Also, this crit damage that you get from this artifact actually exceeds the 350 cap. So if I have a 350 crit damage like Alencia and I have this max Draco plate, it'll actually be 380%. So it does it does wonders for warriors, guys. Make sure you buy this artifact. Even if you pull it, try to buy it if you can because it is limited and won't be back for another year. You can't get it any other way. So that's pretty much it for my should you pull Luna and Tenebrion as well as their artifacts. I really hope this video helped you guys decide whether to pull um, both these units and whether to powder these um, artifacts. To make it short and concise and summarize, I'm going to say Tenebria, easy skip. Tenebria's artifact, also an easy skip. Don't worry about that banner at all. Luna, you have to make sure you have enough ban um, bookmarks for Landy. Um, and you also want to buy Draco Plate, which is Luna's limited artifact no matter what, even if you pull it because it is very, very powerful. And yeah, and Luna, um, if you really like her and w want her... Um, want her really badly because of her design or whatever, or you think she's wifey or something, pull for her if you want. Um, but I personally recommend from a game point or gameplay point of um, view that you pull for Landy no matter what, and then um, pull for Luna. So make sure you have enough for Landy and then pull for Luna because Landy is god tier in PvE and PvP at the moment. And yeah, they're kind of doing us dirty by releasing both banners pretty much at the same time. So we kind of hate Smile again for that, but I guess that's how they make money, guys. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. As always, like a like, Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps my channel out a lot. And I'll see you guys next video. Peace.